Could nutritional supplements prove to be an important weapon in the fight against Alzheimer's? Well, new research would suggest so, with improvements in areas like mood, coherence, memory, all of those are being attributed to the positive impact of nutritional supplements. And to get some insight, I'm joined by the man who co-led a, a two-year study proving this, that being Professor John Nolan of the Nutrition Centre of Ireland at Waterford Institute of Technology. And we also have one of the people who is a participant in the uh, study, who is Hilary, who has been living for a number of years now with uh, Alzheimer's. And Hilary, I'll start with you. First of all, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Give us a sense of, of your experience of the, the disease. When did you first notice it? How did it manifest itself? Uh, you know the usual, not knowing what you're saying. <laughs> and then not remembering what you're after saying. <laughs> and more, did, that's more, did, more or less what it is. Did you diagnose it yourself, Hilary? Did, did somebody say it was worth uh, going to a doctor? Sorry, hold on. Did I diagnose that myself or did somebody say it to me? Oh, the, the, doctor. the doctor. Was that it? Yeah. And do you find it, is it difficult? Does it have effect on, on your mood, on your sense of well-being or happiness? No, it doesn't, no, no. I'm the, still the same person as I was, <laughs> and I still talk the same. And how, how long is it since you were diagnosed? It's just short memory. And you took part in this study that Professor uh, John Nolan ran in relation to looking at whether supplements would make a difference. Did you feel in your own case it improved your, your health and well-being? Well, I haven't been that much doing anything with it. I thought, if this is only the past week now that the, the things are sort of... And you're feeling good? I'm feeling good. Feeling exactly the same as I was. And that has always been fairly happy and in good form. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And uh, like all the things that I normally do, walk, you name it, I do it. And other than walking, what else is it that you like to do? I... What else do I do? Crosswords. Crosswords and jigsaws and all that kind of thing. Walking. And, and who's that in the background that we can hear? My husband. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Only one person could tell you what you're doing and what you're not doing. Your husband. What's your husband's name, Hilary? Wally. Wally. Well, will you say a, a hello from all of us on the program to Wally? I will certainly. Appreciate that. Wally, they all said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hilary. Yes, put up with me. Listen, I'm sure you have a walk to, to go on. I appreciate you very much taking the, the time to join us this morning. That is Hilary and, and Wally there in the background, of course. Hilary is one of the participants in Professor John Nolan's uh, research into looking at the impact of nutrition on Alzheimer's. And he's with us this morning. John, the, the study was to look at, is it nutritional supplements and their impact on the disease? That's right, Anton. Good morning. For, firstly, to say um, Hilary and, and Walter, they're a joy. And you can hear the positivity um, with them. And um, thank you to, to them for, for their participation in the trial. With it, without the patients and the carers, we couldn't do this type of research. So I think it's important that we acknowledge the commitment and um, the success, if you like, of, of, of them being part of this. So they've been fantastic to help us with this type of discussion. Although it has to be said, one of the things that the study was looking into was the effect of nutrition on mood. And having mm. talked to Hillary, I, mm. I'd say you have a fairly high ba baseline in terms of positive mood to work from. You do. And <laughs> I, I think when, when we're assessing mood and, and memory and attentions, they are those type of measurements are only relevant when you take in the baseline. So essentially the, the subject or the participant in the trial becomes his or her own control. And that's crucially important. And when we're doing the statistical analysis to, to test the, the, the changes and, and remember with a disease like Alzheimer's disease, no change is a massive win um, for, for this condition because unfortunately patients can deteriorate very quickly. So that's why when we, when we look at this work and as you say, with, with the food supplements, assessing quality of life and how the patient performs and how, how others around them see how they perform. We call this the clinical clinical collateral story so that it's it's all the sum of the parts of, of, of function and well-being when dealing with a condition like this. And what did your study reveal? So essentially the, this is a unique study insofar as we use targeted nu nutrients of the brain. These are nutrients called um, carotenoids which are basically plant-based pigments. So when you look at fruits and vegetables the, the colours that you see in fruits and vegetables are comprised of these um, really important nutrients called carotenoids and remarkably they're highly concentrated in the brain. 
And in our earlier works, we discovered that patients with Alzheimer's disease are, are deficient in carotenoids. So it makes sense, therefore, that if you were to supplement with carotenoids, Firstly, we had to see that we, we could achieve a response in the blood system, which is essentially the, the taxi service for these nutrients. And by doing that, we were able to measure in tissues such as skin and so on, and the retina as well, the retina being the seen part of the brain. And what's really interesting is that the amount of these nutrients in the retina, which is the back of the eye, correlates to the amount in the brain. So ultimately, we were able to use the retina as a kind of a window to the brain, a, a biomarker, if you like. And by targeting these nutrients in, in this patient group, we were able to improve the carotenoid scores and, and thankfully, in the active part of the intervention, we improve quality of life as reported by carers, primary carers. Is it clear what function the carotenoids actually have within the brain, what they do? Yeah, it's a great question. So the, so the carotenoids live in, in between the, the neurons, the gap junctions. And what we know about carotenoids is they're really powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatory agents. And this is crucially important to Alzheimer's disease because it's a disease that develops over our life. So, And it's the result of doing business with life, if you like. So we call this a process known as oxidative stress, which is basically the, the brain uses oxygen, the cells use the oxygen to survive. But the cost of using oxygen can be these byproducts called free radicals, and they're bad for the brain. And these nutrients can essentially neutralize in a very safe way these free radicals and essentially keep the brain healthy. And also we know that they have these anti-inflammatory properties, which is very important for Alzheimer's disease because inflammation is what we see in patients with Alzheimer's disease. But the message really has to be that this type of intervention needs to be achieved throughout our lives. Throughout our, you know, it's not just something that we should do when we see a problem like age-related macular degeneration or Alzheimer's disease. This is about lifestyle changes to help us live happy and healthy into our later years. That's fundamentally the message of the research. And age, age-related macular degeneration, of course, being the degeneration of aspects of the retina at the back of the eye that, that impacts on, on sight as people age, is that also affected by carot- carotenoids or delayed by carotenoids? Yeah, I mean, that's where we've, we've 20 years of work now in this area. And, and thankfully, we've been able to do, using these same type nutrients, concentrate them. Um, we source them from the marigold, essentially, from the marigold flower out of Mexico. And we, in our typical diet, we probably have about one milligram of these carotenoids, but in the supplement, we're able to get up to about 20 milligrams. And this has been fundamentally key to us being able to change the tissue concentrations. And yes, to your question, patients with age-related macular degeneration, we tested a, a supplement called MacuPrime in earlier trials funded by the European uh, Research Council, the European government. And we've had great success with that intervention for patients with age-related macular degeneration. So does that mean that what you're trying to do is get the levels of carotenoids back to where they should be in a normally balanced diet, or do you need to greatly outstrip the normal diet? Well, we need to outstrip it because we're living much longer than we're actually supposed to, and we can only celebrate ageing if we have functions throughout our age. And I think that's really important. So, look, basic nutrition is our pillar, you know, and we should never move away from having to to, to recommend good nutrition, but... I think essentially what we've been able to do here is is look at, you know, the old cliche of good nutrition is good for you. Well, what is it about nutrition and what are the active ingredients of nutrition? And essentially the discoveries that we've had have been able to isolate the exact nutrients living in these plants, which are working within our cells throughout our body, our retina and our brains. And and yes, we have to change what we do in normal stances. And, And the other point to make is that nutrition, unfortunately, continues to devolve. And while we're producing more and more foods and more and more plants, the carotenoid concentration, these very important active nutrients, continues to decrease because when you make it easy for plants to grow, you tell the plant it doesn't need these otherwise protective nutrients, these carotenoids. So we have a devolution of nutrition. And, you know, this becomes important not just for age-related macular degeneration or Alzheimer's disease. This is really from the beginning. You know, when a mother breastfeeds um, her baby, the, the yellow um, colostrum that we see is this nutrients carotenoid straight away. So nature wants us to have some from a very early stage in terms of retinal development, brain development. But in other, our other work, we've even shown in the general healthy population, by simply increasing the amount of these nutrients via supplementation, we can enhance memory and cognitive functions for you and for me. So this is throughout our lifestyle and, and life and not just at the not just into our later years. So there's obviously a dietary je- recommendation there, John, in terms of the, the usual stuff of vegetables, leafy green vegetables, all of the rest of it. But in terms of the supplementary aspect of mm. it then, what's the recommendation for general dietary supplementation that you're discovering? 
So we see that from about 20 milligrams, we start to see very good. You know, in, in Hillary's case, for example, we improved her blood lutein levels. This is one of the carotenoids that we measured by 500%. And that tells us two things. That tells us how far she needed to go to saturate her, her, her blood system. And of course, importantly, we measured the adverse effects and there's none with these nutrients. They're, they're very, very safe. Um, so we're about 20 times away f- in terms of normal diet, um, I believe. And I, I think we need to look, and we are looking, by the way, at innovative ways to start this from an earlier stage. I mean, I look at my own daughters going to school this morning, and for example, they have yogurts and, and, and so on. Um, I think we have to, and we are working on, on a, pro- a project called Vista Milk, where we're trying to enhance basic nutrition that we do consume throughout our life to give us the extra amount of these nutrients that we need. But do you, do you have years. to be part of a study to get access to these types of supplements or are these over the counter in your shop? So they are over the counter. So in terms of the age-related macular degeneration, the intervention we, we tested was a, a supplement called Macu Prime. And this is basically just the three carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin and mesozeaxanthin. And at, they're at the optimal levels to give the response. And we've been, we've been discussing this. Um, this is all peer-reviewed science, which has all been published with great, great success. In terms of the new studies, I think our work in Alzheimer's disease is probably about 10 years old now. And, you know, working out how to measure these nutrients in, in this uh, patient group has been the first piece. But it, we had an early study, which was very, very interesting. And this, the nice thing about this study is that it represents a, a gold standard in terms of its double blind placebo controlled. And the intervention we use in that experiment is known as memory health. It's not currently available in Ireland, but I believe it will be in the coming weeks as part of the Remind intervention. Before I let you go, John, I have to ask, given what you said about macular degeneration, does it mean that you have now scientifically proven the cliche about carrots being good for your eyesight? <laughs> no, unfortunately. Carrots, is, is it's a different vitamin. That's for, for um, and you, you've heard of the night vision. So that's the visual cycle. But carrots are good for you. But the, the foods that I would say are, you know, your leafy greens, spinach, uh, broccoli, kales. And we should encourage this for, for all our kids and for all of us to try and have that as part of our diet. But in certain cases, um, we definitely need to look at the, the role of safe and targeted supplementation. Uh, for the population. Yeah, why, do, why does everything always have to come back to broccoli? John Nolan, thank you very much. That is Professor John Nolan of the Nutrition Research Centre of Ireland at the Waterford Institute of Technology. And before him, we were uh, heard from uh, Hillary and a little bit from Wally in the background.